I'm Melinda Boring. We're at the CHAD conference in Cleveland, Ohio, and with me today is Sarah Wright. She is the co-author of one of my favorite books, Fidget to Focus. Sarah, what led you to write your book, Fidget to Focus? Well, I'm one of those people who's always been more at rest when I'm in motion. And how many years ago? A bunch of years ago. I met Roland Ross at an ADA conference. He was giving his presentation on fidget to focus. And I immediately related. And I also realized that the only way to learn, you know, to hear his presentation was to go to one of these conferences. There's nothing in print. So you and Roland worked together, and you did get your book in print, for which many of us are very glad. Okay. Is this book mainly for adults? Does it include things for children, or both? And how do you see this being implemented into everyday life for our fidgeters? Well, it, it is for everybody. Uh, everybody fidgets, and everybody should understand that fidgeting is not bad. That all of us, we're human beings, we naturally use sensory motor things to self-regulate. Kids need it more than adults. They need more variety, more frequency, and more intensity. But everybody needs to do something to keep their, their sense of their, to fulfill their sensory diet. Do you find that some things are very good for fidgeting? Do you have recommendations of things to avoid as fidget tools? I'm sure you have your favorites. Well, th there are a couple of things that I think are very important to, to mention. One is that whatever fidget you use, and, and by fidget I mean something that is just sort of a mindless background thing, usually rhythmic, you know, like bouncing your foot in, when you're listening to a meeting or something, um, that is using a different modality than the one you're using for your primary task. So I would not suggest, for instance, having the TV on while you're trying to do your homework because both of them want your eyes. But if you're doing your homework and have some music, preferably, uh, typically, just an instrumental, not with voices and words, that's, that's a good combination. Or listening to a lecture and writing your notes and doodling your notes, then the listening is the primary sense being used for the lecture, but you're writing your notes and you're doodling your notes, and that's helping you stay present and, and attentive. I know from my own experience with my children, my son especially is the prince of distractibility, but fidgeting actually helps him to stay focused for longer sure. and stay more alert. Mm -hmm. And yet I found that over the years, some people are very resistant to allowing children or adults who are more subtle, but children especially, to use fidgets. They think the fidgets will be more distracting or that everyone will want one if you let this child have one. But my son truly needed it. How would you explain and advocate for those people? Well, that is a tough one. That is a continuing part of what we do. Uh, and people very often mistake fidgets for multitasking, and that's different. As I said, a fidget is a, a secondary background task that uses a different modality than the one for the primary task. You're not switching from, uh, you know, I am to your email to your homework to whatever. So that's a, a key distinction to make. I think another important thing is that we know from research now, we've got wonderful research into ADHD, everyone can get overwhelmed, overstimulated, but a person with ADD can actually get understimulated. And that's a very difficult place for a person with ADD to be. It's, it's uncomfortable, it's, it's boring, it's, that's when our natural um, urge the technical term is homeostasis, to get right back in that comfort zone, kicks in. And I happen to believe that a lot of ADHD behavior is a result of that, that need to get back in that comfort zone. And our bodies are a great source of stimulation. There's, there's good documentation, good research that, that indicates that through activity um, of various kinds, our body actually affects our brain at a neurochemical level. You can actually increase the dopamine and serotonin in your brain through physical activity. And those are the things we take drugs like Ritalin or Prozac for. So there is this awareness that, that really helps. But sometimes you don't even need to teach that awareness. You can create fidgets that are sufficiently subtle 
that they fit into societal norms. And this was the other point I was going to make earlier that I forgot to make earlier. Um, the fidget shouldn't distract somebody else. It should fulfill your sensory needs, your need for a little stimulation to you know, help you stay with it, but it shouldn't bother somebody else. Like clicking your pen, bad idea. The noise is very distracting. I quickly right. found we need quiet right. fidgets right. at my house. So, um, you know, jingling your coins might not be such a great thing either, but a paper clip, taking a paper clip and fiddling with it, bending it this way, and that's very subtle. People don't really notice that one. Uh, there are people who get shoes that are designed with big toe boxes so they can wiggle their toes and no one can see. You know, a jiggling leg is obvious and it might, it might distract some. You know, stop that! But if your toes are wiggling inside your shoes, no one can see it. So they so can't stop you. They can't stop you. <laughs> so it's the, the thing I think is really exciting about understanding what fidgeting is about, this, this using sensory motor activities for self-regulation, is that when you understand what you're doing, there's always a menu of things you can choose from no matter what situation you're in. And you can learn to do it so subtly, you can manage your ADD symptoms and nobody's noticing, and so your ADD becomes almost invisible. This has been great information, Sarah, because we're all looking for evidence-based practice. We want to do best practice, and you're sharing there is evidence that fidgeting helps, that fidgeting is truly a tool, and really a tool amongst a toolbox, mm -hmm. so that you have options, because we also know that those with ADHD tend to get bored with doing one thing over and over, and they need variety. Mm -hmm and fidgets can provide that. So thank you for sharing this information. And Sarah, if people want to know more about your book, Fidget to Focus, and how to get in contact with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, the book has a website, fidgettofocus.com. We have a blog, which is where we post all new information that comes our way about studies and the efficacy of fidgeting and how it, it actually helps with uh, retention in the classroom and uh, people share their stories, so it's a, it's a wealth of additional information. That's great. We have so much to share with each other. When we find what works, we should tell everyone, right? <laughs> so thanks for being with us today. Love well, your book. You. It was a pleasure. Thank you.